uh, New York Fight Exchange, November 19th. I'm fighting for a 155-pound title. I see the fight going first round, feel them out a little bit, you know, test the range a little bit. Then after that, once I got my range down, I'm going to put the pressure on them, really have them going backwards. And by the second round, I think I can get them, I can get them out of there. Future plans, eventually, maybe one more after this, or I'm looking to go pro in, in the near future, in the very near future, I'm looking to go pro and try to take it all the way, you know? Just one fight at a time, just to improve all my weaknesses and continue building and growing as an MMA fighter. If there are good opportunities, i definitely go back because I, I'm, I'm a person that believes never forget about your roots, so that's where, that's where I was strongest at once, but I would definitely go back if, if they have the opportunities that, that pique my interest. But right now, it's all about MMA for me. I just want to grow as an MMA fighter right now. Um, it started when I was young. Honestly, when I was young, I would be up late at night just watching kung fu movies and acting out the scenes and everything, and I wouldn't go to sleep. I would stay up all night just playing karate by myself, you know? And then I started watching movies like Rocky, movies like that. Then I started in the UFC when I was probably about 10 or 11 years old. I saw the UFC, I think it was Matt Hughes versus Carlos Newton. I saw it on the VHS. And after that, I didn't see it for a long time. So I, haven't, I didn't see it for a long time. I didn't even watch boxing and wrestling and all that really. Then I saw The Ultimate Fighter with Forrest Griffin. Before it was Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture were the coaches on uh, Ultimate Fighter. And it was on Spike TV. And I'm like, oh wow, I remember this sport. And they were fighting and everything. And I'm like, wow, that's really interesting. But still, I didn't get into it, right? So, something, something inside of me just wanted me to be a fighter. So I was going to college and everything. Um, working, going to college. And always something in the back of my head always said, Cody, you're an athletic guy, you're pretty strong. Because I used to work out. And I was like, you gotta try it. You gotta try it. If you don't try it, you're gonna, you're gonna, um, you're gonna regret the decision for the rest of your life. I said, I gotta try it eventually. So two years later, <laughs> I wound up going to the gym because I was working uh, with one of my friends, and he told me to go to his gym to stop to stop down for a 30-day free trial. So I did the 30-day free trial, and I was a, a college student, you know, no money, and working. Still no money, you're working and you're going to school. So I did a sponsorship program where I would work at the gym a little bit and get the free membership. So I did that and I was, after I would finish my work and everything, I would take every single class. Then I would go home, try to do my schoolwork and everything and I would still work. So I was just grinding and juggling everything at once. Eventually I got good enough where I could uh, fight some Muay Thai fights. And, stop paying and stop working <laughs> stop working for the gym because my talent was speaking for itself now so they had an invested interest in me so that's how I really started fighters that I look up to a lot of times I don't look at like the super most famous guys my training partners are the guys that I really look up to a lot you know because I see what they go through or day in and day out a lot of my training partners like Randy Brown is one of those guys, I've seen him work out, i seen how he trains and it's, it's like ridiculous. His work ethic is sick, you know. Uh, Nate King, he's one of the guys that brought me into the game, you know, he's so fast and so athletic and so strong and I'm like, I want to be like that one day, I want to be as strong as fast as him. Dre is just, he, he has an iron will, you know, iron will, you can't break him, you know what I mean? And Gregor, wrestling is just unbelievable and strong, iron willed wrestlers. Guys like that, those are the guys that I look up to. Not really guys in the UFC because I'm not, I don't have really any emotional attachment to them. I look up to guys that, that, that kind of took me under their wing, you know, and look out for me as like a fight brother, you know what I mean? Those are guys that I look up to. I mean, it means I just have a different attitude. I have a different attitude, you know? As New, York, as New Yorkers, we deal with so much, and we're so strong mentally, and mentally, we're so strong that it just, I can't be broken. And also, being a fighter in New York, you see everything. We have some of the best boxing gyms around. We have some of the best BJJ gyms around. We have every single type of 
person you can imagine in this big city. So we've seen it all and we have, we've experienced it all. So being a fighter from New York is you get the best of the best. We have some of the best stand-up fighters in the world in New York, you know? The Muay Thai scene in New York is very, very large as well as the boxing scene and combat sports in general is strong in New York. So I feel like I'm more than prepared if I fight anybody from anywhere in the world because I'm from New York, because New York is the epicenter of the world. We have everything. So.